Dr. Sharif Abdullah offers a unique, hopeful, and visionary perspective on the persistent challenges of our time. His perspective is shaped by his urban upbringing of poverty and violence, his Ivy League education, and his work with impacted communities in America and in 45 countries around the world. His spiritual outlook is rooted in the consciousness of dozens of religions, faith traditions, and spiritual practices. Sharif offers this unique viewpoint, helping us chart a course that explains where we've been, where we are now, and how we get to a positive future that works for all living beings. Hello, Sharif here. And today I want to talk to you about um, the Seattle is Dying video. Part one I just did previously where it talked about how the old consciousness can't even conceive of the problem, therefore it can't conceive of the solution. So what I want to do today is go through a whole lot of solution. If you find yourself bogging down, it's because your old consciousness is saying to you, that won't work. You can't do that. That's not how the game is played. This isn't the thing that you need to do. And when you hear that chatter, recognize it's just chatter. And it's a chatter from an old society, a society that's dying right in front of your face, a society that's dying right before your eyes. The only question is whether it's going to take you with it. Now, if you are flexible, if you are adaptable, if you recognize that the seeds of the solution lie within the problem itself, you're, you can uh, pay attention and maybe see some things in a different way. Let's get started. Um, in order for there to be a, a Seattle solution to homelessness, and I would say also a Portland solution, a San Francisco solution, a Los Angeles solution, a New York City solution, and all of these places need this solution, we need to have a new vision. Remember the, the, the words from Proverbs, when uh, there is no vision, the people perish. We need a 21st century vision and neither the left nor the right can provide that. If they could provide it, they would have provided it already and we wouldn't be having these problems. We need to have a new mainstream. What we, we need to change the definition of what we mean by mainstream. Remember the chicken in every pot. Remember the um, good job, you know, good home, you know, uh, 2.3 kids, white picket fence. All of that is the conception, the conception of a society that's dysfunctional and is going away. The only question is whether it's taking you with it. We need to support alternative societies. And by alternative societies, I don't mean, you know, people, t you know, tie dyeing their clothes and dancing back in the, uh, like they did back in the 60s. Uh, we need a whole other way of conceiving of this, a whole other way of looking at it and looking at it from a whole different set of assumptions. We need to take care of two things. We need to nurture the new society along and we need to actually spend some money and some time doing that. We also need to provide care for the society that's dying. We need to stop trying to resuscitate it. Okay, so, so that on, on our entire society, there should be a slogan that says, do not resuscitate. What we need to do is find a caring and a compassionate way for this society to transform totally. Not in little itty bitty pit bits, but totally. I want to uh, share with you some some possibilities. Uh, one of them is having organized encampments. 
So rather than people, you know, finding a blank street corner somewhere and starting to erect their tents and trying to make them more permanent, and then the police come along and make a move and it's like get some organized en encampments and call them urban X zones to redo the zoning in this area. That in this area, you would suspend all city bureaucracies. The city bureaucracy is, you can think of this as crystallized consciousness. And this consciousness crystallized a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, even 50 years ago. It is not crystallized on how we're looking and seeing the world right now. That we establish rules based on relationships and consensus. We establish a vision that everyone shares. The vision of the people living in the encampment, a vision of the people who are living, who, who are uh, administering and servicing the people who are living in the encampment, not controlling and dictating. And we all need to be focused on the same visions and we all need to be focused on consensual visions. Like I, I want to be a participant in this vision. Just not, I'm going to teach, tell you people what to do. It's like, we're all going to do this together. Um, I saw a solution that someone said, well, the, we, we know we need to give clothing to the homeless people. Uh, we need to give them all um, uniform jumpsuits so that we can see who they are and we can see that they're not us. And that's a, that is a classic breaker uh, thinking. What would happen if um, we all recognize that we're in this together and therefore I can open myself to my compassion. I can be compassionate and have a vision driven by compassion and have decisions in my community made by compassion. None of this is a pipe dream. We're doing this already. We're just not doing it big enough. Uh, here in Portland, we had the, the, the ongoing experiment of Dignity Village, a homeless encampment that's been there for like 15 years now. Um, it is, uh, they've suspended the city bureaucracies. They, all of the decisions in the encampment are done by relationship and consensus. Everybody has the same agreements, uh, the five agreements in Dignity Village. And this is what I would, I would say the five agreements that every one of these organized encampments needs to be is number one, no violence. You do violence, something else happens to you, and it's not going to happen uh, within that within the encampment. Uh, no drugs and alcohol, because you cannot make make decisions while you are in that state. Uh, no theft, no disturbances or disruptions, and that everybody has to work to create the betterment of the community. We're not creating a situation of uh, everybody just sits back and takes the takes what is given to them. Uh, it's that everyone, every single person, is working for the betterment of all. Um, in order to do a situation like this, you need a whole new security force, not the police. I think that, and you and I've done videos on this, that I think the call to defund the police is completely irresponsible. But I also think that you cannot continue to do the policing that we've been doing. Uh, we need a new vision for security. I don't know if I want to call it policing anymore. That vi we've been doing new forms of security. Um, many of you know about um, a group that gets together every year. Um, COVID interrupted, of course, last year. Of the, called the Oregon Country Fair. Oregon Country Fair is 40,000 people a day that come to this location over the course of a week. And they're all in various states of, um, let's say, experimental consciousness. And they have a security system there that works. It's not command and control. It's not based on violence whatsoever. Um, in their 40-year history, they've, they have managed this group of people, many of whom don't 
don't take management well. And um, they are an example of what you can do once you let go of the notion of I am going to control you for the good of me. Okay, I got I to gotta talk faster because there's a long list here. We need to have navigators. And by navigators, I mean people who are volunteering in these encampments to provide stability, to provide vision, to provide something that human beings desperately need in this society, and that is connection, and that is involvement, and that is how do I actually become a part of the society as opposed to a burden from the society. On the city side, cities have to dump the models that don't work, and we know what they are. Traditional public housing does not work. I grew up in it. It didn't work then. It ain't working right now. We, have, we can create whole new models for housing as long as we don't have the stigma that that's where you stick your poor people. The public housing should be housing for the public and it should be for everyone in the public. Uh, I've talked to you about uh, Singapore. Uh, Singapore's housing situation um, they have public housing for 80% of the population. Poor people have public housing. Middle class people have public housing. And rich people have public housing. Take the stigma out of it, and that way you can see where your real uh, challenges and issues are. As I said earlier, get rid of po traditional policing in favor of a completely different way of doing security based on a principle of nonviolence, based on the principle of, of our common humanity, based on our principle of having consensual visions of how we work together. And we have to sit down and discover those visions together. Uh, traditional energy needs don't work. We, let's find new ways of, of uh, dealing with and, and fostering energy. Traditional healthcare doesn't work. So let's create whole new ways of providing health care with and for each other. I'll give you one real quick uh, issue, uh, uh, example. Uh, this, is, this happened some years ago. I was at my gym and uh, in the locker room, a bunch of guys changing, and somebody said reasonably, you know, kind of loud, uh, was asking about using a particular... Um, a pharmaceutical uh, to control a particular disease. I don't even remember what it was. It may have been diabetes. It could have been a kidney problem or whatever. And in the room, there are like 30 or 40 of us, and we all had different ideas of how to do this in a way that you don't have to take the drugs. I, I was saying, well, you, you know, you drink more water. Somebody else was saying, well, if you, if you exercise this particular way, if somebody else was saying, and together, we recognized that we had wisdom. I heard things that I later incorporated, I, I have incorporated into my life. Um, all of us have this ability, uh, but and, you know, if we just sit around and say, I'm just going to go to the doctor and I'm going to do what the doctor tells me to do, that's the old thinking. It's a model that doesn't work. We need models that actually work. <clears throat> We need to get rid of traditional media, including this traditional social media that ain't social at all, that keeps us apart from each other. We need ways that we can uh, connect with each other. We need to get rid of traditional politics. The idea that Democrats or Republicans, people who have no idea what to do and are sitting there occupying the seat while the Titanic is going down, that what we need to do is have whole new ways that we can talk directly to each other to find out what our common good is, find out what our common wealth is, find out what our common vision is, and most importantly, to find out what our common spirit is. And by spirit, I don't mean religion, I mean the spirit that's driving my heart and that's driving your heart. Once we ask these questions, once we start answering these questions, we're going to start seeing 
the possibility of an entirely new way of interacting with each other, an entirely new way that I can interact with my world, not from anger, not from fear, not from, uh, I don't want to see these people, but from a sense of engagement, from a sense of uh, connection and a sense of community. Now, I know some of you are just ready to fill up the, the, the discussion box below with, oh, that won't work because of this and that won't work because of that. Great. You tell me who's going to work and you make it work. We, we've, been, we've been sitting around, farting around with these issues for way, way too long. All of us are in this boat. All of us are in this uh, are being affected by the conditions of the 21st century right now together. The way all of us get out of this is together. Now, you can you can deny that. You can put a whole bunch of stuff in the chat. You can uh, I'll try to respond as much as much as I can. But the bottom line is once you let go of that notion that your community stops at the color of your skin, your gender, your orientation, your political ideology. Once you stop trying to create a world that works for me and my friends and recognize that you're creating a world that works for all beings, including beings you may not like, once you get to that point, we're going to start seeing ourselves in a radically different world and one that all of us can want to, to, to be part of. Thank you. You are invited to participate in the discussions and activities that will define a positive future for all. We are at the cusp of the expansion of our human consciousness beyond the limitations of our past. Together, we can envision a world that embraces our human potential. Together, we can create a world that can truly work for all living beings.